Sure. Okay, everybody. Uh, good evening. My name is uh, Brian Green. I'm Deputy Director of Planning and Development at North Carriage. I came here in uh, February, so I'm not sure if the if I'm, I'm great to see so many people here this evening. Uh, just before we start, I thought I'd get a, a show of hands to see how many came out back in uh, on that cold evening back in February. Oh. So we've come a long way since that meeting in February, and which is uh, pleasing to see from uh, my perspective. Um, there are a stage where we've appointed a consultant. Uh, so I'm going to just give you a, a bit of an overview, uh, a couple of similar slides, I guess, from that presentation back in February, just to set the scene before I then hand over to our consultant, uh, James Tewer, uh, the consultant which we, who we've appointed. So just in terms of uh, background, we came here back in February uh, to uh, just to set out the process that we were doing to start and to give some of the background to, to this plan, particularly from an OCP perspective, official community plan perspective. Uh, we then, over the next few months following that meeting, we uh, basically established a, an advisory working group um, to help assist staff on the process going forward. Uh, then in June of this year, we took forward a terms of reference report uh, to setting out again what the process will be, uh, who will be involved, the, the time scales, and we took that report to so our community planning advisory committee, uh, and then to council, and both of those, the committee and council, approved that report, and that basically just sets a, a bit of a template, if you like, or a bit of a, uh, a line in the sand as to the process going forward, and just set out in a bit more detail what we're going to do, but also form the basis of our our request for proposal, which we then issued. So that request for proposal was issued in July. Uh, we had a, an excellent uh, response to that uh, proposal that we issued. So we had nine consultants uh, wanting to come to Crofton to do that work. Uh, and we also, uh, on that shortlisting team, we invited a couple of members of the advisory working group to sit on that uh, shortlisting committee when we were shortlisting the, the consultant. Um, and out of that process, out of that shortlisting process, we appointed uh, JWT Design uh, as the, the winning consultant and subsequently appointed them and here we are uh, tonight in terms of having our first open house. So uh, it's been a, a, a good process so far and it's been uh, excellent to uh, reach this stage in, in the process. Just wanted to give a, a, again a bit of a reiteration about Crofton and, and the official community plan. Um, first of all, uh, the OCP has identified Crofton as one of uh, three growth centres in the municipality. Uh, it identifies part of that growth centre area as a mixed-use commercial core area, um, but also identifies the need for local area plans uh, to flesh out some of those high-level policies in our official community plan uh, at the more local level. So we, we're taking those high-level planning policies uh, and relating those back to what they actually mean for Crofton. Uh, but what we don't know is what that growth centre actually means, and that's why we, we started this process is that we want to know what that means for the future of Croft and what a growth centre actually is and what does that transition look like from rural to urban. Uh, and a further reason why we're doing this plan is because of the development pressures that we're seeing in Croft and we want to ensure that when developments come forward that they, they are built uh, in accordance with what we had in mind from this, uh, this local area plan. So that's just a, a brief, uh, that's just the, the OCP map, map 12, which shuts out the, the broad growth centre boundary. Also identifies this hatched, red hatched area as the uh, mixed use commercial core area. And um, then what we're trying to do, and also uh, sort of where the, the growth centre adjoins uh, agricultural land reserve uh, as well. But what we haven't done is, yeah, what does that mean? What does that growth centre actually mean when we get down from, so this is like a, if you imagine this is a 50,000 feet above the, the ground, uh, looking down on Croft and what we haven't done is taking that down to the next level to say well what's it, what does that growth centre match you mean on the ground in terms of uh, massing and street design and uh, landscaping, public parks etc. Also another sort of overarching strategic plan um, that will uh, influence uh, the local area plan is our climate action and energy plan which was adopted by council in uh, February this year. That plan has a, a number of recommendations which are are listed there, but ultimately what we're trying to do through that plan is, is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 33% by 2025 based on 2007 levels, as well as an 80% reduction of GHGs by 2050. So there's some uh, interesting and some 
key recommendations that we want to then take down to the, the next level through uh, this local area plan and this, this overarching strategic plan will uh, help in, in uh, setting some of that context. So just uh, briefly, what is a local area plan? We don't have an official definition in any legislation, but generally what we're trying to do with a local area plan is to uh, basically a, a land use planning tool. It's an urban design tool. It'll uh, have a, a vision, a guiding principles, as well as policies which will help achieve that uh, those guiding principles and, and vision. So here we have the, uh, the the top of our planning hierarchy. This is the planning hierarchy that we're almost ach achieving in North Carolina. We have the official community plan, and there's I guess Crofton, and then we have a potentially, or well, we will have a, a local area plan that will set out, flesh out a bit more in detail. This is not it's not Crofton, but just to give you an example of the, the scale, if you like, of the. Of the, the, uh, of the design that we're trying to achieve is to uh, flesh out in some detail some of those bones that we already have in our official community plan. So, and then that will influence our zoning bylaws. So we are currently uh, starting that process to review our zoning bylaw. So that will have a provide us with a, a comprehensive planning hierarchy to provide certainty for everybody in, in the process. Certainty for developers who come into Crofton, certainty for landowners, certainty for, for the community, the people who live here now and in the future so that they know uh, what they're getting into, uh, then those, those those planning policies, if you like, or those overarching uh, plans will help influence how we deal with these applications. So allow us to determine rezoning applications, subdivision applications when required, and uh, development permits when they're required. So just to give you a bit of a context from a, a population stats perspective, um, we have seen an increase in population between 2006 and 2011. Um, we've done some initial analysis um, using our Stats Canada projections to see what that actually means uh, for crofting into the future. So as you can see here, we're seeing potentially from our initial projections around 712 more people by 2033. Um, so what does that actually mean then in terms of how do we accommodate those additional people that are projected to, uh, to come here? We are currently waited for some more detailed data from Stats Calendar that we've just recently ordered. So we should be able to refine these figures in a bit more detail as well when we get to that next stage. But uh, we have 192 <coughs> hectares in our growth centre. And then just in terms of density, we have you know, 3.56 dwelling units per hectare, uh, which equates to around 10 persons per hectare. And then just equating that, looking at sort of existing uh, household uh, numbers that equates to potentially around 280 additional dwellings that we need that we needed in Crofton by 2033. So, I guess part of this local area plan is to where are those additional 280 units going to be, and in what form, what type of housing are we going to accommodate that uh, additional population growth? A key slide that showed back in February was the uh, the elementary school and the uh, the head count uh, enrolment. So the in 2012, the operating capacity of the school was 182, but it was actually uh, operating about 169. That is forecast to decline to around 137 by 2027. So again, it's clearly need for a plan to try and encourage more families into Crofton. And otherwise, this 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 trend of decreasing school enrolment numbers will continue to decline, and we want to ensure that we can maintain a, a viable school in Crofton, and that. To, to, to do that, that means attracting more families to Crofton. So as, just to recap, this local area plan is going to build on the work of the OCP. It's zooming in, if you like, from 50,000 feet down to, to 10,000 feet uh, to, so that we're fleshing out in some detail those uh, overarching uh, strategic policies. Uh, we, ensure, we need to ensure that we, uh, the local area plan will conform uh, with our OCP and Climate Action Energy Plan. Uh, we want to address local issues based on sound evidence. So, for example, the population growth, we need to try and understand that population growth, our projections, to ensure that the plan is based on uh, the projections that we're envisaging. Um, and, but most of all, it's about providing certainty for everyone. Certainty, uh, I keep going back to in terms of certainty for anybody who wants to invest here, certainty for people who live here as to what's going to happen to, to this town over the next uh, 30 years. Just into the study area, we have three main study areas. We've got the focus area, where I guess the main analysis recommendations will be focused, which is generally that, that mixed use commercial core area. Uh, 
the adjacent area, which is uh, the area adjacent to that, that main focus area, and then the, the wider uh, growth centre. So we, 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 I guess, three sort of layers of policy where we'll be getting into more detail and less detail, and more detail in that, that focus area, which includes the, the waterfront. Just in terms of uh, public engagement so far, um, we have just uh, put up two sounding boards. Uh, there's a sounding board outside the post office and a sounding board out here tonight. We'll be moving those sounding boards uh, around the town to various locations over the next few weeks and we're encouraging people to write on their comments as to what they see as the, the vision for Crofton or what they like about Crofton or what they don't like and uh, just passes their general comments on, 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 on what they want to see in Crofton uh, moving forward. As mentioned, we've uh, established this advisory working group uh, back in sort of March time we established that group and that consists of about I think, 12 to 15 people who uh, broadly represent uh, the community uh, and that's been a useful tool in terms of advising staff throughout the process in terms of uh, commenting on the terms of reference report uh, involved in the shortlisting of the consultants so they've been uh, integral to the, uh, the process so far and we've had six advisory working group meetings uh, since uh, February, meeting on general on a, a monthly basis. Brian, I don't know. we could ask the volunteers to do Yes, that would be good, yes, and yeah. many of them are in the room tonight. Thank you much for that, I was going to mention that earlier. But, so many of those uh, advisory working group members are in the room tonight, so if you want to put your hand up and give us a wave, you know who they are, or who to blame, or... <laughs> But so they've been, uh, yeah, as mentioned, uh, a, a valuable source of local information to uh, staff and the consulting team so far, and they'll be uh, a, a key component of the plan going forward. In terms of this event, we sent a, a newsletter to every household and uh, landowner in the study area to advertise this event. Uh, we've also been doing updates to our community planning advisory committee at key stages, and I guess just going forward from this date on, there'll be a significant opportunity for public input and comments, so uh, we're wanting you to, to get involved and uh, provide your comments. So just that, that advisory working group that will you know, advise the planning consultant team on a, on a number of issues and ultimately be a, a critical friend to, uh, to staff and consultant and, and advisors at those key stages in the process and will uh, allow us to use that group as a sounding board before we go out to, to wider public consultation to test them with options of issues and use them as a, a bit of a, yeah, as I mentioned, a, a sounding board before uh, going out to do wider consultation. And then just in terms of this evening, just wanting you to provide as much comment about you know, what type of development we're wanting in Crofton and what's needed, what form of uh, development we're wanting to see. Uh, wanting to you know, clearly establish a vision for the waterfront, the, the part of the focus area. But also we're wanting to hear from you on a whole host of other issues that you think are important to, to Crofton going forward. So we haven't got any, we're not coming here with any uh, fixed ideas in mind at this stage. You know, it's, it's, uh, everything's on the table and we want to uh, gain as much uh, comments and uh, from you as, as possible at this stage. But in terms of, you know, the issues that we've already identified, you know, there's, there's land use considerations, urban design considerations, uh, you know, public open spaces that are going to be a key issue, uh, community linkages and how we, uh, what community services and issues are, are needed, but also you know dealing with issues such as climate change and you know, for particular sea level rise, uh, an aging population. So how do we deal with those sort of those issues in terms of housing reform that is needed for an aging population? Um, but also just in, how do we encourage new services and and housing forms in Crofton? So we we wanting you to uh, basically yeah, tell us what you think of the, of the key issues at this this early stage in the process. And that's. All for me, I will now hand over to uh, our consultant, uh, James Tewer. So, uh, yes.